Hello and welcome to Fire's LEGO Reviews. Today we're going to be looking at the LEGO Minifigures Series 26. They are set number 71046. They were released in May 2024 and the individual packages retail for $5 in the US. This series is fully space themed, which if you've seen my previous review for the Series 25 minifigures, you'll remember that I commented on the fact that there was no space figures in that series and I was not aware that this was um, going to be the next series. So this is where all the space figures actually are. They did a full series of them. Um, this is not the first time that we've had a non-licensed themed series. Um, series 14 was a Halloween monster theme. Series 18 was primarily focused on costume figures, as was Series 23, although most of those figures um, had kind of a holiday theme with Thanksgiving and Christmas in particular represented there. So fans of Classic Space are no doubt very excited about this series. Um, personally, I was never really into Classic Space that much growing up. Um, I was more of a castle fan, so um, I'm hoping that maybe this signals we might get a fully castle historical themed series sometime in the future, maybe a few years down the line, who knows. Um, and while I wasn't into the classic space sets myself, um, I do feel like this is a really neat concept for a series, and I think the minifigures that are in it look fantastic, and I'm excited to um, open them and see what we've got. Now, since they've moved to the blind box packaging instead of the blind bag packaging, um, I've been buying my series from Minifigure Madness in boxes of 36. Um, so this is a full box, what that looks like. And the front, you can see the full series is on display here. You've got the individual packages on the inside. Um, going around to the side, we've got one of the figures highlighted um, with the Classic Space logo. Um, and then, We've also got the backside here. There was a little bit of water damage, it looks like, in shipping. But this is what the back of the box looks like with just a starry background and the LEGO minifigures logo, some legal information there on the bottom. And then we've got another minifigure on this side, that being the Orion minifigure and the space logo and LEGO minifigures logos again. 2024 has kind of been the year of space for LEGO. Um, in many ways, we've gotten a lot of city sets that are space themed, as well as some exclusive sets, and even some gift with purchases, and this minifigure series um, continues that trend with a fully space theme. This is what the individual packages look like with the new cardboard box packaging for the minifigures. Um, so you got a lot of legal information and stuff on the back here. Um, and then on the front, we've got a few of the minifigures in the series displayed with that classic space logo up on the right there, Lego minifigures front and center. We've got series 26 down here with 12 to collect. And on the bottom, we've got a barcode and a QR code. And the QR code can be scanned with an app called BrickSearch. Um, I am not affiliated with them in any way, um, but they do have a feature that allows you to scan these boxes from series 25 on and identify the minifigure inside. So I'm going to use that to identify these instead of opening them up first. Um, and we'll see how that process works and hopefully are able to identify these with 100% accuracy. The first minifigure that we open up was the alien tourist. So we'll show you him in a moment. But first, I want to focus on the paper insert for the minifigures. So we've got our Typical checklist here with the 12 figures in the series on the back, that starry background, and then the LEGO minifigures logo up at the top here. And then on this side, we've got the logo again, series 26 and 12 to collect, with one of the minifigures highlighted up in this corner, and then some instructions for some of the kind of multi-step um, builds that are featured in a couple of the minifigures with some legal information on the bottom here. So here is the alien tourist fully constructed and as you can see the base plates for these minifigures actually have a starry space themed design on them printed on either side of the studs so that is really neat to see. The minifigure is really nice really cute um, I love the design that they use he's got a t-shirt with it looks like it says heart earth maybe I heart earth um, maybe the eye is hidden there um, but then he's got a Hawaiian shirt on top of it um, with a backpack, um, a dual molded short legs, he has a camera, um, and then a nice little fedora here on his head. 
Um, I do wish that we could have somehow seen a return of the molded head for the Series 6 classic space alien. Um, however, that headpiece did not feature any studs, so they wouldn't have been able to attach the fedora to that. Um, but perhaps a new mold with that same kind of design for the head with a stud on top would have been neat. Um, other than that, I think the figure looks really great. We'll show you he does have printing on the back of the torso. So just more of that Hawaiian shirt design on the back there. So overall, I think this is a really solid start to the series, and I think it shows the possibilities that LEGO was able to use with this fully space-themed series and include some kind of out there ideas that might not have been included in a typical regular series. Um, so this is definitely a really nice inclusion and a really cool thing to have. Um, you could stick several of these guys in city layouts kind of hidden in different places. Um, that might be a fun thing to do and I think probably a lot of people will do with this figure and even in mocks and stuff, you know, kind of hiding them in different places might be a fun thing to do with this figure. Up next, we've got the Emtron Power Lifter, and I am not very familiar with this subline of LEGO Space sets, um, but I do know that Emtron was a sub-theme of Classic Space. Um, that's about the extent of my knowledge, though. This figure is nicely detailed, though, with great printing on the torso and the legs. Um, there's even printing on the sides of the legs. Um, so you can see he's in kind of a power suit here. Um, he's got a pack on the back which has to be constructed um, that has this arm and component over here which I guess is the power lifting piece um, and then he also comes with this brick with a printed tile on top. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that represents. Um, maybe if you are fans of Mtron you might know um, but I am not sure um, but you can use this power lifting tool. There is a stud on the inside of it so you can actually place the brick in here and attach it to that stud so it stays in place um, and he can carry it around with this um, component here. So really neat there. Um, you can see this round tile is also printed with a dial and we've also got this one by two plate printed with a caution strip and you can see from the back here that the legs not only are printed all around but are also dual molded. This is the printing on the back, which you will never see with the pack attached um, to him. Um, but he also does have a dual-sided face with kind of a display shown in front of his face. Up next, we've got the Flying Saucer costume fan. Um, again, really showing off the versatility that LEGO was able to have with this series. Um, and producing a figure that probably we would not have seen otherwise. Um, this is a really unique concept um, and executed really well. So um, you can see his actual torso and legs are printed with that same starry design that the base plates are printed with so he actually kind of blends in with the base plate when you stand him here um, so that's really neat there is no printing on the arms or the sides of the legs um, but there is printing on the back which shows off earth and the moon um, which is really neat there um, obviously only one side to his face because of this clear component here um, and then the flying saucer is a, I believe, a brand new piece designed specifically for this figure. Um, it is done in this kind of lacquered silver color. Um, and you can see it's really intricate along the bottom, the mold that they did with all those little um, divots in there. And then there are slots in the top of it that allow you to place that clear piece in um, and secure it. So. Again, a really unique concept. Um, I definitely like this figure a lot, um, and it, you know, it's not something that I would have ever expected to see. But in a series like this, LEGO was able to take some risks and produce some really interesting and unique figures. Up next, we have the Imposter, which is another really unique concept that LEGO probably wouldn't have done in another series. Um, so this is actually an alien masquerading as a human. You can see that very fake looking smile on the face there um, and you can see there are some edges to it to kind of signify doubly that it is not as it seems. Um, you have this nice brown suit here that the character is wearing and then these small alien micro figures. Um, there are only two of these featured in the artwork but there are actually three included in the package. One is an extra but um, of course you can include all three of them with this figure if you'd like. Um, he does have printing on the back, kind of showing the door that allows these little alien creatures to pilot the 
human suit, if you want to say. Um, there is a little antenna on top of the head, and then the opposite side of the head shows one of the little alien guys inside. Um, if you were to take off that face covering that is visible on this side, that is who is actually piloting this kind of mech designed to look like a human. So a really fun and interesting concept that they were able to do with this figure. Up next, we've got the Ice Planet Explorer, and Ice Planet, like Emtron, is another sub-theme of space that I was not overly familiar with, although I had heard of it before and seen what some of the old sets look like. Um, so they typically feature this really nice color scheme of blue, white, and orange. Um, this figure has some black thrown in as well. Um, I imagine that's also part of the original sets, but I know the primary colors were the blue, white, and orange. Um, you can see she's got this Ice Planet logo on her shoulder. She also has a sidekick of a robot ice penguin, um, also featuring that Ice Planet logo on its torso. Um, she has this brick-built kind of chainsaw, ice saw, I suppose, with that translucent orange saw blade there. Um, really nice detail um, printing on the torso and the legs. Printing of course on this armor piece and then printing on the really neat looking helmet here. Um, I'm not sure if this is a brand new mold or something that was recreated from um, the old Ice Planet sets because again I'm not overly familiar with those sets and what accessories those figures might have had back then. Here's a look at the torso with the armor removed as well as her face with the helmet removed. Um, so you can see a nice fur collar there for her jacket. Um, the Ice Planet logo on the jacket as well. Um, and then the back of the jacket featuring some printing as well, and she also has a double-sided face with a much angrier expression on this side. If you want to display her with the face, she also comes with an alternate hairpiece, um, so you can replace the helmet with that. Personally, I'm not a big fan of this hairpiece for this character, although of course you could swap it out for any hairpiece that you like. There are also studs on the back of the armor piece that the chainsaw and other accessories could potentially be added to if you'd like. Up next we've got the Blacktron Mutant, and Blacktron, as far as I understand, was an evil faction of Classic Space. Um, again, not super familiar with the original sets, um, but this definitely does appear to be a villainous character, um, and probably a human character that is undergoing mutations, so you can see um, the left side of him, the right side as you're facing him, um, is pretty much completely human with his Blacktron suit, um, a regular minifigure leg and arm, um, whereas the right side of the minifigure, left side looking from the camera, is definitely mutated. So you can see the printing on the minifigure head, as well as he's got double arms over here and a mutated animalistic looking leg, kind of like a dinosaur leg. Um, and then he's got two blasters here and a really nice um, mohawk hairpiece, which I believe is new for this set. Um, really cool to see though. Um, and then kind of this breathing apparatus here. Um, and then he also has some printing on the back of the torso as well. So a neat figure for sure, definitely if you're a fan of Classic Space and Blacktron. Up next we've got the Nurse Android, which is fantastically detailed. Tons of printing on the torso and the legs. There is printing on the arms as well that are actually translucent pieces with printing on them um, and I'm not sure I've ever seen that before translucent pieces for minifigure arms um, so that is really cool um, you can see there's printing on the back there a lot of little displays showing like the heartbeat um, as well as the temperature um, and battery life there um, different things as well. Um, she's got a bottle for the baby, and the baby is in the classic spacesuit, um, this time in pink, um, but of course it is for a baby. The head and helmet of the baby are one dual molded piece, um, but you can see there is that classic space logo on the spacesuit there. The nurse android does have dual sided head printing with the back looking like an outlet of some kind perhaps to um, plug her in to power her up. But yeah, a really neat figure and a unique figure continuing the kind of trend for this series. Up next we have the Spacewalking Astronaut, which is another incredibly detailed figure. This one more of a traditional astronaut than a kind of science fiction figure. 
Um, you can see the classic space logo is there on her torso, um, which features tons of printing. Um, there's also printing on the legs that wraps around to the side. There's printing on her arms with the classic space logo again represented there. Um, this side it is not present, um, but still with printing there. Um, this brick built contraption also has a classic space logo on the back printed on a tile. Um, and there are multiple pieces that go together to create this, including printed pieces. Um, and these seem to be kind of her controls for perhaps propulsion. Um, as she is doing her spacewalk, she has a gold visor here. The visor can't be flipped up, but you can take it off to see her face underneath inside the spacesuit. And if you remove her helmet and pack, you can see there is printing on the back of the torso as well as the back of the head here, although those are not going to be visible most of the time. Up next, we've got the Retro Space Heroine, and she will pair really nicely with the Retro Space Hero from Series 17. Um, very similar design between the two figures. Um, she's got fantastic printing, including on the arms and the sides of the legs. The legs are dual molded, as you can see from the back here. Um, there's printing on the back of the torso and this arm as well. She comes with a blaster and also this silver-colored, clearly robotic bulldog piece. Um, so that's a neat addition as well. And her helmet is a unique mold with a ponytail coming out the back of it. Um, so similar style to that Series 17 Spaceman, um, but a little bit different and a different mold, obviously allowing for that ponytail to be sticking out the back. She has a double-sided face as well, with this side showing some more teeth and her grin. Up next, we've got probably the most striking minifigure of the series, and really the epitome of what LEGO can do um, kind of outside of the box for this series, and this figure is Orion. And I will admit, when I first saw pictures of the series, um, I wasn't really sure what this character was, but then when I realized what it was, I thought that it was really incredible. Um, so this is a representation of the constellation Orion. Um, you can see that constellation is represented on his shield here. Um, and the character is done instead of a kind of traditional minifigure style, he is done completely with trans purple pieces. Um, including the arms and the legs, so this marks the second appearance of um, translucent limbs in this series. So that is really incredible, and it's got that really kind of glittery design as well um, among those pieces. And his head is also done in that same color, um, as is his hair and the club that he is holding. Um, you can see he's got armor here in silver, um, the printing on that extends to the back. So very cool figure, extremely unique concept, and I love that LEGO was able to kind of think outside the box with this one. There is no second side to his head, so you can see the face printed on in silver there, um, and the other side is just blank, just continuing that trans-purple glittery um, color that you can see all throughout these pieces. So a really fantastic figure, really bravo to LEGO for this one, and creating something truly unique for this series. Up next, we've got the alien Beetlezoid, and I feel like this was LEGO's attempt to recreate the Xenomorph from the Alien movies in minifigure form, with obviously LEGO not doing R-rated source material at this time, but um, I feel like this minifigure um, is a clear homage to the Xenomorph, um, with the head shape especially. You can see he's got pincers here. Um, this is a completely molded piece for the head, a brand new mold. Um, he's also got beetle wings here um, with some interesting patterns printed on those. He has these molded legs that I believe first appeared in the Demogorgon from Stranger Things minifigure. Um, and no printing on the arms. There is printing on the back of the torso, which we'll show you in a moment here. But he is also holding this um, component with a leaf and what is traditionally used as kind of like Lego ice cream. Um, pieces, which I think is representing kind of the egg that other members of his species might hatch from, um, which also seems to me to be an additional nod towards the Alien franchise and the Xenomorph aliens. Um, so a really cool and detailed figure here. Um, I really enjoy the look of this thing. Here's what the back of the torso 
looks like. So just kind of continuing that insectoid pattern from the front of the torso. And as I mentioned, that insectoid pattern, it reminded me of the insectoid subline of space from early 2000s. Um, perhaps Beetlezoid character was kind of a nod to that series as well, as the insectoids are otherwise not represented among this series. The final minifigure from this series is the Robot Butler, another kind of cute character um, that was created for this series. Um, he has printing on the torso, including the arms, and printing on the back of the torso. Um, and this is interesting. It features a print of what was printed on old 1x2 tiles for cassette tapes um, back in the <clears throat> 90s and early 2000s. Lego sets, I remember having a few of these pieces um, with this exact thing printed on them, so that is a neat little Easter egg there. His legs are a, I believe, brand new component. Um, it is completely symmetrical on both sides, um, so just kind of that robotic leg piece there. Um, you can see this is his head here, um, and then on the back side, there's just a little logo there perhaps where a battery could be underneath that plate or something um, and then the head is inside this globe piece as well and he is carrying a pot and it looks like he's probably whipping up some frosting in there um, so a really neat figure really kind of cute figure um, to round out this series all right so now i'm going to rate and rank all the minifigures in the series from lowest to highest and first is the imposter minifigure. Um, I do think that this was a cute concept. Um, however, overall, I feel like the figure is pretty lackluster um, with that kind of plain suit design. Um, so I'm giving him a 6 out of 10. Ranked slightly higher than him for kind of uniqueness is the robot butler. Um, I do think this was a neat figure, and I do enjoy the new piece used for the legs. Um... However, I feel like the light gray and dark gray color scheme takes away from what this figure could have been. Potentially something more vibrant would have been um, more interesting for this figure, so I'm giving him a 6 out of 10 as well. Moving on, we've got one of the more detailed figures in the series, that being the spacewalking astronaut. Um, however, astronauts are something that we've seen plenty of before, um, and even though this one is decked out with a lot of detail and a lot of pieces, um, I feel like, you know, overall, it's kind of a throwaway inclusion, almost. Um, I feel like they could have given this slot to something a lot more unique and interesting than just another astronaut. So I'm giving this figure a 7 out of 10. Up next, we've got another one of the actually unique concepts, the Flying Saucer costume fan. Um, I feel like this was executed very well. Um, however, you know, aside from the starry print that is also found on the base plates, um, there is not a lot of detail going on the figure itself. It's really just the concept of the figure that is cool. Um, so I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. Moving on, we've got the Nurse Android, and she definitely has a lot more detail than some of the previous figures. Um, so that's why she ranks a little bit higher for me. Um, I do feel like the mostly white color scheme is a little lackluster, although it does fit with the theme of being a nurse. Um, and I do enjoy that pink baby character. Uh, but overall, I'm giving this figure a 7 out of 10. Up next, we've got the Emtron Power Lifter. And, you know, again, I'm not that familiar with the old Emtron sets. Um, I feel like this was executed well, but a little bit boring overall. The red and white color scheme, I, again, with some of the color schemes for these figures, is just a bit lackluster for me. Um, although, I imagine if you're a fan of Emtron, you may like this figure a lot more. Um, you can let me know in the comments if that's the case, but I'm giving this one a 7 out of 10. Up next, we've got the Alien Beetlezoid. This is breaking into the top half of my ranking, and, um, you know, this one is definitely a really neat figure, a lot of detail, um, definite homages to the Xenomorph from the Alien franchise, um, and it was pretty cool, but not one of my absolute favorites of the series, um, but I am going to give this one a 8 out of 10. Up next is the Ice Planet Explorer, and similar to Emtron, I'm not super familiar with these old sets, um, but I do like the color scheme on this one a lot more than the red and white of the Emtron figure. 
Um, and I do also like the inclusion of the robot penguin. So this one ranks a little bit higher for me and I give her an 8 out of 10. Up next is the Blacktron Mutant and you know I'm not a huge fan of the color scheme but I do enjoy all the detail um, that was included on this one. I like the kind of half and half where half is more of the human side and the other half is the mutated side. Um, it's a really neat concept for a figure and I enjoy that kind of callback to Blacktron um, similar to the previous figures that were callback to old space theme. So I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. Up next is, in my opinion, the most unique concept that was done for this series, that being Orion. Um, I think he was executed very well, and even though the trans purple pieces really, um, really highlight the theme of this figure, um, I feel like it takes away a little bit from his overall appearance. It's kind of hard to make out the facial features there, um, and it is, you know, a little confusing unless you actually know the title of the character or notice the constellation on his shield. Um, it might be a little confusing for what this figure is meant to represent, but I do think he was done very well, and I am giving him a 9 out of 10. We're moving on to my second favorite now, that being the Alien Tourist. Um, I think this is a super fun concept and was a contender for my favorite of the series. However, the fact that they used a standard minifigure head instead of some kind of molded head for this figure um, is the reason that I kind of rank him a little bit lower. Um, you know, if that was included, he probably would have been my favorite of the series, but because that wasn't, um, he remains just shy of that, and I give him a 9 out of 10. My favorite of the series ends up being the retro space heroine. Um, I think she looks really good. Um, I love the color scheme. I feel like all the design elements match really well with that retro space hero from series 17 and I think Lego just did an amazing job on this figure and the inclusion of the robot dog um, just adds a little bit of bonus to that and she is the only figure from this series that I'm giving a 10 out of 10. Overall I think this was a really solid lineup for the series being a space themed series. Me personally not being a huge fan of classic space um, meant that this was a series I was not overly excited about but I do really enjoy the figures that they were able to include in this. Um, Overall, I definitely commented on some of the color schemes not being particularly to my liking. Um, I would have liked to see maybe some more yellows and bright reds, you know, besides that Entron figure. I like seeing a wider variety of bright colors um, in a series. I just think it makes the full series um, pop a little bit more when you look at it all together. Um, and I would have liked to have seen maybe a classic spaceman um, included. Maybe not one of the original classic spacemen, but one more in the design of like the Series 1 Spaceman, um, or Series 6, I believe it was, Intergalactic Girl. Um, maybe, you know, a character in a space suit like those, but in a different color would have been cool to see. Um, but other than that, you know, I really like that LEGO was able to think outside the box with some of these figures and produce some really unique um, designs. Overall, I'd give the selection of figures um, an 8 out of 10 for this series. So that, combined with my individual ratings of the figures, averages out to 7.7 .7 for the full series. Um, so I feel like that's an accurate representation of how I feel about this series. Um, definitely some cool figures, but some definitely lackluster color schemes. Um, and, you know, it kind of represents my interest in this series as a whole. You know, I like it for what it is, but it is not something I was necessarily clamoring for. That said, I hope that they may do more themed series in the future. I don't want to see every series like this, but, you know, every couple of years it would be cool to see one, and personally I'm really hoping for a castle one in the future. I know we're supposed to be getting a Dungeons & Dragons series later this year, so that would probably push a non-licensed castle series out several more years, most likely, if it were to happen at all, but um, I can still hope that that will happen eventually. The Brick Search app was 12 out of 12 for identifying these figures, so I definitely hi highly recommend using that, um, especially if you run across these boxes in the stores. Um, they can help you identify the boxes without having to open them um, or just pick randomly and hope that you'll get the figure that you want. Let me know your thoughts on this series 
and let me know in the comments what kind of theme you might like to see LEGO do in the future for a full series. Um, if you have any questions or comments on the review, feel free to leave a comment. If you enjoyed this review, please like the video and subscribe to my channel for more content in the future.